Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SoSpire.com and today I am here with the third project in our ongoing Sewing with the Serger series. I really like this project today because it is so functional and it's a wonderful way to use up those smaller cuts of fabric. For this particular project, you're going to need less than a half a yard of fabric. And I suspect that you're going to want several of these. I'm already working on my third one and I immediately found a use for it. I'm gonna give you a peek at that. It is a little drawstring fabric bin and I have this loaded up with knit fabrics, which I've just rolled into a little bundle. So I think this is a really great fabric storage solution in particular for those smaller, more awkward cuts that would be hard to store flat on a shelf. And it also is going to allow you to transport different collections of fabric with ease. You of course can use it for a variety of things, but I wanted to empty it out and show you what that looks like. Now what makes this project unique is this drawstring here is crafted from knit fabric. And so I think it looks prettier than elastic and it functions really nice because the knit kind of slides inside of that little drawstring gusset that we're going to create, which is actually a new construction process that I'm going to show you where the interior lining fashions that drawstring. So in the sample that we're going to make today, I have a contrasting interior fabric and that will add a lot of detail to the project. You also, of course, have the option of crafting it from the same fabric, and then this is what that would look like. I wanna give you the approximate measurements on this uh, prototype here that is just under eight inches tall and about four and a half by four and a half, maybe four by four and a half kind of rectangular shape on the base. You have a little bit of flexibility with that depending how wide you want to make your corners. And so I think you can see how when you cinch this up you could use it for a variety of purposes. And then the drawstring can double kind of as a little handle there providing that you don't put contents that are too heavy, of course, inside of it or your drawstring will stretch all out. If you did want to carry something heavy in it, then I suggest using a rigid material for the drawstring. And you, of course, I'm sure have lots of ideas for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the camera angle for you. Only one other thing I wanna tell you before we start sewing, Everything except for one straight seam is completed on the serger for this project. That top seam that finishes that gusset is actually going to be stitched on your sewing machine, all right? So I will move down so you can see the serger and the fabric and we'll get started sewing. So your interior fabric for this project is slightly larger and it measures 12 by 18. And then the exterior fabric is slightly smaller and it measures 10 by 18. And so what you're gonna need to do is surge along the top long edge. So this here is a directional print. So I would want my little raccoons facing up so I'm going to surge along that top long edge. And then for the interior fabric, I don't really know that it has a right or wrong direction. So again, I'm just gonna stitch right along one of those long edges. 
And this is just to finish that edge. And then the next step after you've finished that top edge is to fold both of those panels right sides facing and then stitch down that short edge to join those two sides and create a circular panel. like that and then you're going to lay your cylinder flat on your work surface and center that seam and then go ahead and serge across the base and now you have like an envelope style and you want to reach inside of there and flatten down that corner and you can give this any depth that you like. Um, three inches would be my suggested minimum and four inches would be my suggested maximum. So if you want to hit right there in the middle, you could do three and a half inches on the depth. And that's what I will do for this particular project, which is going to be slightly more shallow than the prototype that I showed you the measurements of in the beginning. So I like to just measure and mark with the Sharpie. You can use Taylor's chalk or any other device that you prefer. And then I'm just going to serge right across that line to create that depth. And I want to repeat that process on the opposite side. So I am flattening that corner so that the seam of the base is in the center. And then I'm using my ruler to mark three and a half inches across. And then I stitch right across that line and that removes the excess fabric and creates the depth. And so when it's finished, this corner ends up being about three and three quarters, which is closer to the measurements on that prototype. So this is the exterior. So I want to turn that right sides out. And that's so cute. And I really like the positioning of the raccoons how that worked out for me. Very nice, isn't that fun? All right, so I'm gonna set that aside and I'm going to repeat that same process for the interior. So I begin by creating the cylinder, centering that seam, then stitching across the base and then laying that so that I can fashion those three and a half inch corners.
Okay, and this is the interior. The next step is to fold over that top edge a half an inch, press that, and then fold that top edge over on itself another half an inch and press that. And that's what the interior looks like. Then you're going to fit this interior inside of that exterior. And you're going to begin by aligning those seams, which are going to create the drawstring, the opening rather for the drawstring is going to be right there on that seam. So it's kind of counterintuitive. You'd think that that is the back, but it's actually the front. And that seam gets disguised by that pull tie closure there, that drawstring, which becomes a decorative element. So you're just working around this, tucking that exterior up underneath that interior fold, which is the drawstring gusset. And so just put a couple pins or clips in that to hold it. Now you could absolutely just stitch all the way around this and be done and have a precious uh, little fabric caddy here. If you were going to stop at this point, I suggest interfacing the interior or the exterior, or both if you like, of these pieces and then you'll have a more rigid stable container. I specifically did not use interfacing because I want this to be very lightweight and this drawstring to function properly. So too much interfacing up here is going to inhibit this gusset drawstring function. So keep that in mind. If you're really adamant about having the interfacing, perhaps cut it shorter and omit it from this top portion or use a super lightweight interfacing. So now what we're gonna do is head over to the standard sewing machine and we're gonna put this up on the machine deck and start stitching a half an inch from that seam. Go forward, back stitch a couple times and reinforce that area very well because it's gonna become a stressor point. And then using just a scant seam allowance, stitch all the way around this interior accent and stop just a half an inch shy of that seam. And again, reinforce really well. And we're gonna leave that opening there so that we can thread through our little knit tie and create that drawstring. Okay, so you can see how fun that is with that accent across the top there. And just even with the two layers of fabric, it actually is pretty sturdy. But as you're aware, you can really reinforce that with an assortment of interfacings. Now the drawstring on this is fun. This is just some lightweight knit fabric that I cut one and a half inches wide. And then the knit is awesome because it doesn't fray. And when you pull it, it kind of curls in on itself and it does just naturally take that awesome corded look. And the more you pull on that, the better that gets. So it doesn't take much, just kind of move it through your fingers there until you're satisfied. My piece here happens to be, again, that one and a half inches by about 32 inches long. 
which is going to give me a nice long tie that I can fashion in a bow or not. So you're just going to use a safety pin there with the knit, come down a little uh, further into that. And then you'll come in where we left the opening and reinforced and just thread that through that gusset. Should be a really easy threading job providing you stitch close to the bottom of that. The only obstacle would be if you had too narrow of a channel and then you would have to find a smaller safety pin. And you just come out that other end there and working with that nice long tie also keeps you from pulling that all the way through. And that green is so fun with the blue and this, I don't even know what color this is here. It's like a pinky purple, but it's so fabulous. All of these colors, it's really awesome. That's Amy Butler on the interior and Tula Pink on the exterior. So truly a designer pouch there. And it's almost done. The what I like to do next is try and get these drawstrings aligned and that takes a little fiddling, but once I think that they're pretty close, then I go ahead and knot those ends and then I just give that fabric a little snip and what that does is clean up that kind of selvage end there where they attach it. I believe they use like a loom, you know, and there's the little holes in the end. And so I just clean that up a bit. And I have a super cute little pouch that could be used for a variety of things. And you see how that drawstring kind of disguises that seam there. And then if you tie that in a cute bow, it will even hide that little bit of overlap with that raccoon that got caught in the seam. And now we see more the raccoon up here and then the little one down here with this tail. So lots of fun. I can hardly wait to see your drawstring bags come together. I, in particular, I'm really interested what you're gonna keep in them because I think they're, again, awesome for that fabric storage and a breeze to make, right? Unedited, this video is 23 minutes long. So I think you can whip these out fast. So please do let me know in the comments what you're gonna put in yours. And if you have purchased a serger or gotten your serger out of the closet as a result of this series, I know a lot of you are sharing testaments to that on the Facebook group page. If you haven't yet found your way over there, it's called Sospire pattern, showcase, and sewing inspiration. I'll put a link down in the show notes for you. In addition to some other links that you may also find of interest if you enjoyed this tutorial. And then the last reminder, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the channel. It certainly helps us reach more people and share the joy of sewing and creativity with the world. So I will be back next Tuesday for the last serger project in this series. Can you believe it'll be the last Tuesday in May? I hope we're gonna be sewing some type of garment, but I cannot guarantee that. I still am working through that process. If I'm not satisfied with the process by then, then we'll pick another fun, functional project and revisit the garment when I am ready and feel confident that that's a good quality tutorial. So again, thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you have an awesome week. And as always, you know, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you. Bye everyone.